Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with rank 9 of season 2 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for the Canadian Grand Prix, of course. If you missed out on yesterday's video uh, from Barcelona, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out, of course. Yeah, we're making good progress. We're, we're really getting into the deep bits of season two of this career mode and you know i'd like to say uh, we're doing pretty well at the moment as well of course in terms of upgrades going on around the scenes uh we've now got all of our facilities with the exception of durability and personnel and marketing up to level two um so hopefully that's going to allow us to try and get more different drivers potentially interested in the team the development war is still ongoing you can see we've got some major and minor upgrades all in the works uh, that should be on the car over the next couple of weekends um and then obviously championship wise max verstappen 15 points clear at the front of the field there now ahead of Sergio Perez after another good result last weekend out in Barcelona. But we're still hanging on to best of the rest, of course. Spain wasn't the best Grand Prix for ourselves. Seventh overall in the Drivers' Championship, fifth overall in the Constructors. Two points between us and Alpine as we head into the Canadian Grand Prix. But of course, if you're new around here, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed to the channel as well. Of course, we've ticked over 110k. The next goal, of course, being 120,000 subscribers. A massive thank you to all of you uh, for the continued support on this series as well. Of course, I know there's obviously been a lot of real-life Formula 1 uh, going on at the moment. So for all of you that have watched and enjoyed the video still, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. But... Yeah, Canada, hopefully a circuit that suits our car a little bit more than recent weeks. Let's get into it. Well, would it really be Montreal without the threat of some rain at some point in the weekend? There, a little bit of wetness at the start of FP1, but by the time we're heading out onto the circuit, that all seems to have abated there. So, yeah, we need to try and get some good laps in early on. Definitely still doesn't feel like we're quite up to peak grip. Uh, just yet. Of course, peak grip will really come at the end of Grand Prix Sunday, but, you know, besides the point... Uh, hopefully, of course, yeah, rough Spanish Grand Prix weekend. It's definitely one of my boogie tracks still on the F1 games. Just cannot quite gel uh, with that circuit in a Formula 1 car. And, you know, we almost actually had uh, done quite well there and then just all kind of fell away right towards the end of the afternoon. So we can only hope, you know, Montreal, I really like this place. I've always enjoyed it as a venue to drive around. So fingers crossed this weekend we can have a bit of a better run of things. But... Yeah, that's, that's all got to start here on Friday morning. We've got to put the work in. Um, you know, if we, you know, ideally, of course, we want to be back inside the top 10. We've done really well early on this season of scoring good, consistent points. And, you know, this car has generally uh, been stronger around the uh, lower downforce circuits. Baku seeming to be the obvious exception to that rule. But anyway, coming towards the end then of my first, uh, sorry, free practice program. Tire wear run first up, and that is gonna be a purple score. Wonderful race simulation run up next. Then, unfortunately, our yeah, last program is the qualifying sim run. So let's just try and see if we can get this nailed. Nice and early on, still in FP1. Yeah, really surprised actually. Uh, despite the slippery circuit, that we got the tire wear run done. So hopefully, this could be a promising sign. Right, heading down then, in towards the final couple of corners. Let's try and see if we can get this nailed. Oh, I must admit, the car does feel good around here so far. I know it's still early doors on a Friday, but car really does feel settled in. I feel like I've got a good setup underneath us, and that's going to be purple scores all round then. A beautiful way to start the weekend. Let's hope we can carry this momentum into Saturday. Well, I'm hoping at some point in the near future we can actually stop featuring Q1 sessions here. But as proven last weekend in Barcelona, definitely not at that point yet inside F1 23. As we make our way out of the final couple of corners, ready to start my first run here in Q1. We're going to need, I think it's about a mid to high 1 minute 10. Top drivers, aka Max Verstappen, into the 1 minute 9 so far. But yeah, Charles Leclerc, our reigning world champion, Sixth place overall. You know, Ferrari really just have not strung it together early on this campaign, especially for the Monogas driver. 
But that being said, Red Bull really did fall apart in the second half of oh, last year's campaign. As rather than talking about that, we've got to focus on our own lap. I think we were eight tenths down on Liam Lawson at the end of Sector 2. So this first run has really not been quite what we wanted from it. Can we get a good tidy line through the final couple of corners? That new updated wall on the inside really did throw me off a lot throughout Season 1. But out of the final corner, up towards the line... An 11-6. It was a conservative lap. I'll, I get it, but that is appalling. I, mean, I really hope I haven't jinxed myself with that whole hopefully not going to need to feature Q1 thing anymore. Way off the pace at the end of our first run. So now we're going to really have to go all out attack mode here on our final run in Q1. We're going to need some sweat if we want to make it through. pace at the front on a 109.4 but we are finding time as we make our way down through the hep and their first little mistake on the lap but hopefully we can ride the throttle off the corner a little bit earlier slightly compromised line but almost nine tenths up as we make our way into the final sector we're going to need to be brave through the final chicane tip it in or slap the wall on the exit though that's going to compromise us again nine and a half tenths up up over the line is that still last? Surely we're not last here. 21st, we only out-qualified Teo. Deary me. And what a disappointing end then to qualifying here. Carlos Sainz fastest in Q1. But Esteban Ocon, Lando Norris, P2 and P3 there. Things you love to see. Red Bull down in 6th and 7th place, but I don't think they did a second run. But yeah, half, what, a tenth quicker than Teo Porcher there. And the end of Q1 is really not the result we were hoping for. So, so tightly bunched up towards the top of the midfield, though. I mean, pretty much what? Verstappen? Even higher than that, really. I mean, yeah, Esteban Ocon. We were a second away from Esteban Ocon. And we're down in P21 there. So, very, very tightly bunched. Hopefully, we can try and recover something in the Grand Prix on Sunday. Maybe again, just running a little bit too much front wing. Montreal is not only the second largest French-speaking city in the world, but it's home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. The name Villeneuve looms large over this one, but who can write their own legends today? If you want flat-out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7-mile circuit, peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline, and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Russell, Hamilton, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Magnussen, Sargent, Gasly, Bottas, Joe, Albon, De Vries, Stroll, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Mr. Monaco, and Theo Porsche. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, well, here we are then, on the grid, ready for the Canadian Grand Prix. And looks like we could be in for quite an interesting one. Rain, apparently meant to appear later on this afternoon. Often, if previous games are anything to go by, it's Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. That can actually mean that the rain is in here longer than the game reckons as well. So, split strategies then up and down the field. To be honest, rain really does help us out because anything now can happen this afternoon and we need a good recovery drive 
from the rear of the field. I said in Barcelona um, how we've done three races in a row where we score and then one where we don't. I'm really hoping that doesn't become two where we don't. Okay, expect to see some rain about 10 to 15 minutes from now. Right, okay. That, that rain is meant to be arriving a lot earlier than the game told us then. Rain, it reckoned, was going to be 25 minutes away. Now it reckons it's 10 to 15. Well, really, there is a sense of anything can happen now here in Montreal. And I'm hoping that anything is that we get a good result here. It's the place of my first ever mechanical failure inside F122. So hoping that doesn't strike again here on F123. But tailport chair at the rear of the field then. And let's do this thing. Five red lights here in Montreal. Lights out and away we go. There is Nick de Vries not getting off to a particularly good start. Liam Lawson having to cut down the middle there as Holkenberg weaves to his left-hand side in towards the first corner. Just going to go three wide. That was a little bit scary there. A little bit of contact with Yuki Sonoda, but we'll find an avenue around the outside of the second Alpha Tauri car. There's still three wide with the Alpha Tauris off of turn two there as we head up the hill and don't really fancy my chances on the outside there. De Vries, um, sorry, yeah, trying to get his nose back in there as Sonoda and I side by side still off the corner and that time around Yuki finally does give up the position. So two places gained then on the opening lap and it is, well, one current Alpha Tauri driver and one of the former. Uh, but it looks like one of the Red Bulls as well has got between the Ferraris at the front of the field there as here comes Sonoda again down the inside. Well, at the end of the next straightaway there. And we're losing a lot of time to the cars in front already with all of this battling. I mean, we'll see him, Constantina, up down into the heaven, which we do. Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg's going for it. Lap one there is Zhou Guan Yu. You see on a set of hard compound tyres. But, yeah, is it Charles Leclerc? Is it Carlos Sainz then that leads the way as we make our way through the final couple of corners? Lawson back to the outside of Nico Hulkenberg just in front of me. And it is going to be Charles Leclerc then who leads the way at the end of lap one. Lawson can't quite do anything against the Hulk there. So, yeah, two places gained for us on this opening lap. As are we going to see Lawson try it again into turn one? No, we're not. Good little clean start, which is always important here at Montreal. A lot of big breaking zones, a lot of chances to lose your wing. Whoa, down the inside of Lawson. That was more of a necessity rather than trying to actually line up a move on the Williams there. But we're through. We're under P18. Guess I can't complain. Mark liking it as well. We're definitely running a bit too much wing around this venue, but now the DRS has been enabled. You can see we are actually able to apply a little bit more pressure there as Perez now, new fastest lap of the day. So the Mexican clearly having a good run a bit early on and wants to try and cut down that gap that his teammates built up in the championship. We're just kind of sat observing at the moment, learning what we can early on there as he has so many different tyre strategies in play. I reckon that rain then is going to be slightly delayed. I don't reckon it's as soon as Mark thinks it is at the moment. And even when it does appear, you know, we might not have to make a switch over onto a set of intermediate tyres as we were lucky to gather that up off the grass. Um, but yeah, this is going to be one of those races where you're probably not going to know where you're really fighting until right towards the end. I can see a McLaren car. That must be Lando Norris uh, really holding up quite a big gaggle. So hopefully we can try and get up to them. But yeah, this is going to be, I think, a weird race of patience. I mean, said though, you can only be so patient. And if there's an opportunity for a run, we're going to try and take it there to the inside of Nico Hulkenberg. Slightly later on the brakes. Oh, a little bit too ragged, actually, on the brakes. Rattle over the curbing. And I think we'll have to give the place back to the Alpha Tauri car there off the corner. Hulkenberg is going to be able to fly back past me. And that really cost us both a lot of time. My apologies, Nico. Dropping away from the Alfa Romeo, Zhou Guan Yu has now meant that Hulkenberg hasn't got any DRS to defend himself this time. Going to make a very, very aggressive manoeuvre to the left-hand side, but it's not going to make any difference. Clean past him will go there as we almost hop over the curbs again. We get away with it that time, and now we've got to get back within the range there as Hulkenberg's going to try and come back at me. We've still got the DRS though, so nothing he can do. I think Bottas now starting to lose touch slightly from the cars in front of him, so Zhou Guan Yu and I... Oh, sensing an opportunity. I'm going to sense an opportunity to get down the inside of the Alfa Romeo. And yeah, there we go. So by new has been navigated. Again, just breaking that a little bit earlier than I was expecting. And that's going to be one Alfa jumped. Can I try and get the second one then in very, very quick succession? We'll try and hang on the racing line if possible to the outside of Bossas. Oh, carrying a lot of speed in. Just about gather it up though. 
keep it on the road. And now Zhou Guan Yu's going to fancy his chance as well then. So Bottas might have an issue. There's Stroll and Albon there duking out just in front of me. Um, yeah, suddenly we've... Yeah, we're, we're not far away from the points now. But we had the same story in Barcelona. And of course just could not manage the tyres towards the end of the race. So got to be careful still. We are only on lap 9 of 35. Whoa. That was scary. Almost into the back of Lance Stroll, and again, it was not an overtake I intended on doing, but kind of had to launch it to the inside there. Luckily, obviously, F123's AI, much, much better than F122's there, because Stroll would have just continued to turn in on me and made plenty of contact. Y you know, it was an aggressive manoeuvre, like I said, but just the AI Constantina up into that hairpin up awfully. And this is probably where post-race map needs to come in, because the next few minutes of footage here are going to be very, very confusing. So following Alex Alban through the first couple of corners, you can see already starting to struggle a little bit uh, with rear tyre temperatures there as we try and hang close to the Williams. And as we tip our way into the next chicane, attack the curves quite nicely. And the back end just completely breaks free. Now, normally, that's not too much of an issue. Uh, you, you occasionally get those sorts of things on the F1 game. And had I not picked up the rear floor damage, I probably would have carried on. We got a red flag. Um, which meant, of course, that I couldn't then rewind the race. Obviously, I was fine with the spin. It was just, the, like I said, the rear wing damage uh, that kind of frustrated me. Um, and this is kind of where the game breaks. So now, obviously, we're, we're, you know, red flags as normal. We've got the new red flag sequence, of course, inside F123. Um, team Reckon sets off compound tyres is a good way to go, because, of course, the rain is not too far away either. I try and gamble it. I want to do mediums um, just to sort of see what we can do later on in the stint there. So we're going to advance in through uh, and you can see really then five red lights on the grid. Already a couple of cars ghosted rather weirdly. Haven't seen that before on the game but it is lights out and away we go once again and immediately we get another red flag for some reason. Just trying to avoid cars as best as possible uh, as we head down in towards the first corner um, and yeah we just, for seemingly no reason, got another red flag there. Um, so now the game wants us to go hard ties to the end of the race. Uh, and now we're apparently in last place, despite the fact there are cars behind us. Um, so F123 has apparently kind of lost track of who's where anymore in this race. Uh, and as you're going to very quickly find out there, Nico Hulkenberg is in the lead now. Um... I, th I think I've broke the game. I, I don't know what's happened. We've had two red flags. And so Hulkenberg's leading. Sorry? Nico Hulkenberg is apparently leading the Canadian Grand Prix. Um, well, this is this has spiced things up. That's, that's a bit of an odd glitch, F123. But apparently we're now on hearts to the end of the race. Uh, I, I don't know what's happening here. That's a very, very odd one there as Esteban Ocon gets down my inside. How did we end up last in all of this and why have we got a five second penalty? That's what I want to know. Everything's getting a little bit weird and wonderful. As, will I get blue flags off Hulkenberg if I get round him? That's the other thing I want to know because it doesn't look like anyone's getting blue flags off the Alpha Tari at the moment. But anyway, Max Verstappen then I think is at the front of the field and leading the way here. Um, got one of the Ferraris still in P2. I would guess that's still Charles Leclerc. But, yeah, is Hulkenberg leading or is it going to work out where he is quite soon? Um, no. Hulkenberg. Hey, who's, who have I got blue flags off now? Who's in P2 in this race? We've got yellow flags. I hope someone's going slowly. That's Joe Guan Yu. Now getting blue. Right, okay, so Hulkenberg now is lapping everyone. I don't know whether one of the AI behind me is as well. I don't think so anymore by the looks of it. But Hulkenberg might be in for the easiest first ever podium of his life. On the inside of Joe... Oh, and Alex Albon. That's not good. That was aggressive as aggressive can be there. But yeah, maybe now we've just got to try and use Hulkenberg to... When obviously, when he's lapping cars now, effectively lap them with him. But this has surely got to be patched F1. This, this can't be how red flags work. I mean, the only other thing we can really hope for here is that we get a safety... Who am I getting blue flags off of? Don't say one of the Williams as well is now right up the order. Um, yeah, that might be 
Is that Alex Alban? I don't really know. Either way, we're still hanging on a fair old way in front. But that's a very, very odd glitch inside F123. Um, but yeah, the only thing I can think of is if we get a safety car later on, then everyone surely will be able to unlap Hulkenberg. And yeah, it must be the other Williams then. Uh, who is in that second Williams car? It's Alex Alban, isn't it? And obviously not Sergeant anymore. How have I completely forgot? Oh, Lawson, isn't it? So Lawson could be on for a huge result here as well then. As apparently I've got to let the Williams car by. Where is he? Come on, there you go. Yep, Liam Lawson is apparently P2 now in this race. So I don't know how any of this has worked, but F123, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, more cars then. Having to let the front runners by is Lawson now. Ah, Magnussen! Ah. <laughs> Magnussen there, just obviously... I thought he was just going to stay out of the way, of course, because the others were lapping him. An aggressive move? Kind of? Not really? Yeah, I, this race is, I think, turned into a bit of a disaster. I think the other problem we've got, of course, with this whole try and use Hulkenberg and Lawson to get around other cars is... Hulkenberg and Lawson also aren't that quick inside F123. And, of course, I now can't jump Lawson because then we'll just get blue flags again. So, ah, and now we've both... Oh, dearie me. <laughs> we've created yellow flags. Is it green? We're green flag racing again then. I don't really know what's going on here, to be honest. I think there's even more cars uh, behind Teo Chair uh, that are laps up on us all, but... I mean, yeah, this race, 30 laps to go. I just want to now get to the flag. But F123 is not a perfect game, it would appear. Well, 10 laps to go then here in Canada. And we are now back within the range of Nico Hulkenberg. So probably just going to have to sit here throughout these final remaining laps. And I know I'm going to apologise in advance. Obviously, some of you won't be happy uh, with the way this race has gone. Of course, the way the glitches have got involved. And it, it is sadly... Um, one of those unfortunate things as well, of course, inside F123. But I, I also see a lot of people sort of say that content creators hide away from the glitches and that kind of thing. Um, or, you know, don't showcase them. Putting them in absolutely my main series on the channel and the series that will get the most exposure uh, is absolutely, I feel, the way sometimes is like a necessary evil sometimes of how to showcase these things. I don't know whether I'll get this glitch anywhere else inside F123. Um, so, of course, if I don't put it, obviously, in a, in a video like this that has real percussions uh, inside the series, it kind of just gets forgotten about and left on the side. So, although I completely get there's a lot of you that obviously won't be happy with the fact, you know, that I've continued on with this race and obviously now... Hulkenberg looks dead. I mean, there might be a few massive Nico Hulkenberg fans out, out there uh, that absolutely love watching me just follow Nico home in the final few laps of this GP. But, yeah, these sorts of things obviously really do need fixing uh, inside F123. And hopefully, of course, you know, if anyone from EA or Cody's watches this as well, of course, they can hopefully learn something from it. You know, maybe they'll be able to spot something from the footage that I wasn't able to that caused it to do this. Um, you know, whether there was some trickery going on on the mini-map, whether there was something else that happened, you know, under the red flag procedure, you know, on the mini-map that I missed, like an AI getting lost or teleported or anything. But, yeah, I get that some of you obviously won't be happy with the fact that, you know, he's going to skew results overall in the bigger picture. But it also means, you know, coming into this season, let's say Hulkenberg wins the championship by three points, for example... You know, those three points gained here by a glitch are what are going to allow him to take that crown. So, yeah, he gets less forgotten about in these sorts of higher profile incidents, if you will. But, yeah, only a remaining few laps then here from Circuit Gio Villeneuve. Um, we, we're just going to try and get the car to the flag, I guess. And, well, unfortunately, it's unless something crazy happens, going to be another no point score for us. Fair. We actually need to stay behind Hulkenberg anyway, not only for the blue flags, but also uh, we're, we're really down on fuel. I don't know how we're really down on fuel when we've had so many red flag laps this afternoon. There's yellow flags out. One of the McLarens seeming to be grinding to a halt, so disappointing end to the afternoon for them. 
I, I don't actually know whether that McLaren was at the front of the field or not, so I guess we'll get confirmation of that in just a moment. But yeah, Hulkenberg's giving me a good chance to save some fuel as well here uh, late on in the day. Is Nick De Vries out then? I reckon I reckon he was way up the order as we've now got a virtual safety car uh, late on, but unless that gets changed into a full safety car, not really going to change anything. Oh, and Nick De Vries was on the podium. <laughs> oh, no. So it could have been a Hulkenberg Lawson Nick De Vries podium this afternoon. I'm going to claim a freebie out of it as we've still got yellow flags out in sector three. What's going on? Uh, I think we're good. Yeah, there we go. We're green flag racing once again then. But poor Nick De Vries. First F1 podium. Gone. Gone in an instant. I've only just realised, of course, this will technically be the final lap then here in Canada. And Nico Hulkenberg. But well, it's going to be 200 Formula 1 races before he gets that first podium. And not only is he going to get a podium, he's going to get a race victory with it. Only Hulkenberg could finally break his own record and do it in the most broken way possible. He also smashes Sergio Perez's record of how many was it? 180-odd races before a first ever Grand Prix victory. But Hulkenberg then in towards the final corners. i got no idea... I know Lawson's joining him on the podium, but I don't know who else is going to be filling up that third step there. Hulkenberg in towards the final couple of corners here in Montreal. It's a broken race, but I'm sure Alpha Tauri could not care one bit. Nico Hulkenberg is a Formula 1 Grand Prix winner. So as they climb out of the car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process, and that work is very much paying off. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently, and it's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Miss Monaco. Well, it was absolutely thrilling to watch them carve their way through the pack, and actually, harder than it looks. It's time to check out the constructors' standings, and pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, Nick Hulkenberg isn't then a Grand Prix winner in Formula One in, again, probably the only way Nico Hulkenberg knows how there. Max Verstappen takes the win here in Canada ahead of Sergio Perez there, sight in third ahead of Hamilton Russell and Charles Leclerc there. So again, another promising start to a race where it all just falls apart for Charlie Boy. I don't even know where we finished in that. Apparently P15 behind Teoport Chair. Um... Yeah, who knows? Who really knows? I can't really make sense of any of it uh, at the end of the day. But it does mean championship-wise for Stappen, 21-point lead now at the top of the table. Sainz as close to Checo as Checo is to Max. Uh, yeah, Charles Leclerc, they're 25 points back off Lewis Hamilton. But somehow, despite Oscar Piastri's strong result, we're still in seventh place overall. We need to try and get back in the points and hope that some of these races can go a little bit better for us once again. Constructors-wise, Red Bull 105 clear at the top. Mercedes 7 ahead of Ferrari after a good weekend. And yeah, we have been jumped uh, by Aston Martin. They're down into sixth place overall in the constructors but thank you all so much for watching like i said i know it's not exactly the way i'm sure a lot of you would have wanted to see this race and video go but sometimes you know i think still i got to showcase the glitches inside f123 and like i said you know people will be talking about it for a lot longer if it doesn't get fixed of course if it makes it 
into a video like this. But we will be back tomorrow. We'll be back ready, I think, for the uh, Austrian Grand Prix, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, so second sprint weekend of the year. Hopefully, we can have a bit of a cleaner run that weekend. It's a very, very good track for us based on last season's result. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. And we'll be back very, very soon with more F123 content.